Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, Simil underscore traveler here. And today we're gonna be discussing a story of success. And uh, I'll be figuring, uh, featuring in someone who decided to migrate from uh, his own nation to, uh, to my nation to seek greener pastures and make those big moves. So when you think about immigration, you think about people moving out of one nation to another because of maybe conflict, war, political instability. But the biggest thing is where people migrate from their own country to seek greener pastures. And I have had uh, uh, interactions with Ugandans who have migrated in Kenya. And one mentioned that in every year, 1.5 million Ugandans migrate to within the whole of East Africa. May it be Kenya, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Rwanda, just to seek out for greener pastures. But one thing that I have seen in common is that Ugandans are migrating in large numbers into Kenya. I'm yet to discover the reason as to why, or maybe is it because the country is big in infrastructure or maybe the work ethic is getting or is up to par or maybe it's becoming a world first world country that is going to be a whole different level of discussion so as i told you i'm gonna be featuring in one amazing guy who migrated from kenya and decided to make big moves so meet him in person So guys, success stories come with different shades and different characters. As you have seen, I have already introduced you to one among to one of the most successful guy who I've met here in Nairobi. Mind you, he's an immigrant. We wanna discuss and get to know more about him in this video. Okay? So want to know more about his success journey and also get to know how the inspirations that comes with his successful journey so uh, let's proceed with this video because we're gonna be moving around bear with us for the movement but that is still creates the scene so uh -huh. here we want to be living and then he's here you can give them your name again? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I guess let me do another intro then. Okay. <laughs> so what's up, guys? So uh, my name is Daniel Achuze, and most people call me V Dollar, most especially on social media. And uh, I'm a day trader again, but also an entrepreneur. And I'm initially Ugandan, but I've been staying in Nairobi now for like one year. And uh, I'd say it's actually so good here, pretty cold and all that. So. Alright, so just like how you guys have heard, well, my name is Daniel Ashwizi, and yes, I'm a day trader. So, we are going to be driving around a bit as we discuss, off with some, I believe he has very many questions. Yes. I'm pretty excited. Yep. Uh, uh, I have 101 yeah. questions <laughs> to ask you. Okay. Um, so people have already heard that you migrated from uganda and decided yeah. to come and look for greener pastures here in kenya yeah. and uh more so when you're looking for greener pastures you have like 
professional background mm -hmm. or maybe schooling mm -hmm. yeah. yeah like you can how has your profession like changed or created job opportunities for you especially coming from a foreign country and yeah. deciding to you know what yeah. i want to leave everything back home yeah and come to kenya yeah. and uh put my experience my job expertise in job market here mm. in kenya well um honestly mm -hmm. i think um that's a very tricky question uh -huh. but let me start off with a backstory even on how i moved to kenya uh -huh. or nairobi specifically mm -hmm. well so in uganda when you're growing up and you know oh say about nairobi uh -huh. somewhere i don't know but it gives you that perception of like Nairobi. Mm -hmm. That sounds, you know, <laughs> sounds big. Exactly. Yeah. So growing up, like um, my dad actually came to Nairobi like very long time ago. Wow. So to me, I was like, okay, right, when I get the money, all oh, good things get good. Mm -hmm. I'll move to Nairobi. Uh -huh. Then also, um, with my work. Mm -hmm. I think I wouldn't say there is a very very big difference mm -hmm. as comparing say Uganda and Kenya because I'm a day trader and mm -hmm. all the work is entirely done online yeah. or maybe because I do YouTube videos and all that mm -hmm. actually the biggest audience is Kenya Kenyans. but that even existed when I was still in Uganda uh -huh. so I do feel like mm -hmm. uh, firstly for me to move to Nairobi Kenya mm -hmm. Trust me, that's a thing from my heart, firstly. Like, uh -huh. I love it and I feel very good here. Mm -hmm. And then also, great people. Oh, I uh, forgot to mention, there are more traders here oh. than in Uganda. In Uganda. Yep. So I always wanted to, you know, connect and get in touch with these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, unlike, say, in South Africa, where there are more traders and, uh -huh. and all that. Uh -huh. In East Africa, specifically, say, Uganda, where I'm from. Uh -huh. We didn't have that network. Network. So I wanted to come over here because uh -huh. in some way, again, we have very many things in common as mm -hmm. compared to the work and then, you know, the lifestyle and all that. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got here. And honestly, it's been very, very great. So uh, that means there is a certain work ethic mm. here in Kenya that is more driven than back home. If you may put it like that. Yep, you're yeah. right. You're yeah. Right. You're right. I think also considering the work ethic, mm -hmm. okay, there's also this thing of like, um, most especially for men, mm -hmm. feel like when you're growing up and you know, say you're getting better and all that, uh -huh. at some point you just have to seek uh, being uncomfortable. Yeah. Like you want to go travel a new place yeah. and all that. And also the people that surround you mm -hmm. will affect. Again, your work ethic. Yeah. So I'd yeah 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 continue. Mm. Uh -huh. So I'd honestly say uh -huh. the work ethic here uh -huh. and the people. Uh -huh. Trust me, it's crazy. It's crazy. Exactly. But well, that's your seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my seatbelt. Yeah. So that means uh, okay. That's why people say that uh, you need to come out of your comfort zone. Uh, maybe your hometown uh -huh. to try something else, especially if you wanna seek everything that you ever wanted in just life. Put it, I think it's going to make you uncomfortable. Okay. We could just put it behind so you can easily film or something. It's okay. All like right. that, it's nice. okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you seek uncomfortability, mm. sometimes it may lead to a successful end of the, the journey or the exactly. end of the journey. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I honestly go for that. Yeah, that's why we always say, you know what, get out of your hometown and get to a new space or a new place and get to see new people maybe they might be having a different mindset on things on how they see things yeah i swear that's 100 percent true you see mm -hmm. um you grow up saying the same town the, yeah you the use same the same people, people yeah same way of doing things mm -hmm. so like you're just locked in there but let me give you like a story so growing up i'm from western uganda western uganda and then you know, like when you grow up and now you want to go make money, mm -hmm. most of us end up in the city. Uh -huh. So living Western Uganda and moving to city, say Kampala, mm -hmm. that opened up my mind. I'm like, what? Like, oh, there is a bigger picture exactly. other than just from you just know? Western Uganda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now when I moved to Nairobi now, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, now this is even different. Uh -huh. Or oh, recently I moved to Dubai. Yeah, now in Dubai, I'm like, that. what? There is much more than just being in exactly, Kampala yeah, yeah. or Nairobi. So I feel like, like most especially like for a man seeking growth and all that, mm -hmm. at some point you just have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Go for that. 
I mean, try a different city. Leave your hometown. Yeah. Go see how other people live, and you know. Yeah, because that one is going to give you a different perspective, perspective of, of life. Things. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So like, uh huh. I think like you've already talked about like yeah. uh, the new opportunities uh, that moving mm. or just leaving everything behind and moving to a new city has created for you. Yeah. Like mm. yo seeing new things and also meeting new people who are going to push you maybe to your limit yeah you know so uh -huh. i think maybe you have seen notable differences between kampala and uganda uh, kampala and or nairobi. maybe in nairobi mm -hmm. so would you mind sharing some of those significant changes yeah. that you have noted uh, and seen yeah um, okay that's uh, a little tricky but I would say that differences, mm -hmm. but not too uh, too, big. too big. Okay, starting off with the people again, as we said, mm -hmm. the work ethic here, I, I would say, uh -huh. is pretty much better than in Kampala. Kampala yeah. Uh -huh. uh, now someone might uh, think, oh man, mm -hmm. I think you're that's a personal but, thought. Or yeah. Something. People be like, oh, you're trying to trash. But uh -huh. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, but, no, but no, like no. I've been in Kampala, I've worked there, and I'm from there, so I know what goes down there. Yeah. Then also, um. Adopting off with the weather here, I yeah. think that's a difference. It's much more cold here. Mm -hmm. Then, other things, I would say it's all the same. Getting back to the food, then the work doing things. Mm -hmm. I think that also relates again back with my work. Yeah. Uh, specifically for the fact that I do trade and mm -hmm. you know, most of my work is indoors, so I don't get to move around most exactly, of the time. Exactly. Yeah. So, I think I would say those are some of the biggest differences I've noticed. So mm -hmm. It's. Uh, after deciding to move from Kampala to Nairobi, yeah, I guess there's some. Let me say, do you miss Kampala or do you miss home? Ah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I saw like when I do miss, I always go there. You always yeah, go there. Yeah. But has it like moving here like yeah. affected you in like maybe socially? Because this is a new city, but mm. at least you have already met quite yeah, a number yeah, of people yeah. who will be like, Yo, bro, feel yeah, at home, yeah. feel at home. Exactly. So oh, That's very true. Yeah. I've always been so bad with interacting with people. Uh -huh. So even when I came, mm -hmm. actually when I travel, mm -hmm. my intention is to just go and try to talk to new people, make friends. Uh -huh. So when I came over here, uh -huh. like that was a challenge. Uh -huh. But that was in mind. I'm like, I want to make new friends. New friends, to. exactly. Yeah. So it's been a challenge, but I've grown in it, and I love it honestly. So that means, uh, socially and networking, mm. that has. So guys, we just gotten back home. It's very very cold out here. It's very chilly, and also it's a little bit raining. You know the weather. In Nairobi, sometimes can be a little bit be crazy, but guys, this continue despite of everything. You know, we have to give you content back to back, and you know, make you get inspired with things that we do. So we just got at home, and uh, my guest. Yeah. Uh huh. I'm actually trading today. Ah, yeah. <laughs> actually, guys, he's trading. I'm not into Forex, uh, but yeah. maybe later in the future, yeah, yeah. I might think about it. Because sure. I'm seeing these people are living large. <laughs> people are living, ah, people are living Just beautiful life. Takes and, a bit of time. Uh -huh. That's the thing. By the way, how long did it take you to, to maybe study and? Mm -hmm. For learning as learning, mm -hmm. it didn't take too long. Mm -hmm. Like say three to four months because oh. it was self learning. Oh. You know, you're learning from YouTube and all that. Uh -huh. But then it's like in cycles with trading. Mm -hmm. Even when you learn, you know everything. Now making money is also a different thing. A different thing. You have to invest. Exactly. So uh -huh. I'd say three to four months, and then making money. Uh -huh. It's like after a year for me. After a year. Yeah. Cool. I was all self learning. Yo. So people that learn from same mentors or other people who know better already mm -hmm. take a much more shorter while mm -hmm. because you're now learning from someone who knows already uh -huh. yeah so a little tricky honestly how has trading been mm -hmm. like especially because you touched about the trading and stuff how mm -hmm. has it been since now you started making money yeah uh, 
I would honestly say this has been the biggest thing in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, for the fact that I don't have any professional, you know, um, whatever. Uh, Am I supposed to mention it? Like, I was at university doing civil engineering, but then I quit that. Uh -huh. So trading has been it. For whatever I am now, uh -huh. it's been trading. Ah, yeah. so you left, you said uh, university, were you actually just? Um, I was doing civil engineering, I guess oh, that's in Uganda. So. Civil engineering, yeah. oh, that's a big course, that's a big yeah, course. Yeah, man, hey, civil engineers. But sometimes what I say is that, yeah, you might decide to go to, to school to study, mm -hmm. but at the... As you enjoy the journey of studying, you realize that you are more interested in other things than just being in school. Mm. Yeah. Also, whereby where it comes to maybe uh, parents taking kids to school to study a certain course, mm. that's like living as someone else's dream than living your dream. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So. Yes, you might go to school. Papers are good. You might yeah. go to school, but at the long run, when you look at that thing is it more profitable than your interests yeah you know sometimes the interests are more profitable mm. than what maybe you studied to school true, 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 true. and more interests tend to open more doors and expose you to more things mm. than just being enclosed mm. in one career yeah yeah and don't you think that's a very big thing i still feel like even up to now, mm -hmm. most guys that are university yeah. are doing courses because their parents said do this. Do this. Yeah, I was doing civil engineering. Uh -huh. In actual sense, it was my parents saying, we need an engineer course. Like, those are some of the most highest paying jobs. Mm -hmm. Civil engineering. But then when I think about it, like, inside Personally. I don't align with it. Yeah. yeah. I want to do something that, you know, mm -hmm. and honestly, and by the way, it's a very big decision for someone to say, ah, no. Mm -hmm. I won't do this, I'll do what I personally feel. Yeah. Now, at this point, it's not that I'm against school because we need school. We need school. We need, school. We need are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, you as an individual, what do you feel like? You want, do you want to become a doctor then? Yes. Yes. Go for that. We need uh, them. We need exactly. them. We need them. And, you know, so I think at, at the end of the day, it's like, how do you feel and what are you passionate about and what do you want to do and mm -hmm. how do you want to impact the world? Yeah. I would say just like that. Just a, yeah. That's yeah. I'm a big listener of mm. podcasts mm. and people who are, have like a big achievement, especially in finances mm. and business. Mm. And someone said something that still stuck with me for a very long time when I started listening to. I think is this guy PDP podcast. Mm. Then I can't yeah. remember Patrick. Uh, yeah. Patrick. Mm. There's something that he said like, look for something that. Uh, I was saying, uh, look for something that you are interested in, yeah. focus it on, on it 100%, mm -hmm. and invest more in it, mm -hmm. so that you can become good in it. The same thing, you have become so good in exactly. trading, yeah. and it has significantly changed your life yeah. and you have reached some milestones mm -hmm. yeah 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 i think what you said is actually very true mm -hmm. like find something uh -huh. get so so good, good at it, it. Uh -huh. and trust me trust me there is always way too much to get into and yeah when you're trying to find something that you're good at it yeah. sometimes you might find it difficult mm -hmm. at the first beginning if you don't have like a mentor who is still doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah. But the thing is, the first step is the hardest one. But the moment you make that first stride, mm -hmm. man, you are good to go. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I think the beginning is always the hardest. The, the hardest, hardest thing. thing. Yeah, the hardest. That's the hardest. That's uh, who is this? I can't. I am forgetting their names, mm -hmm. but. Uh, it's the same same podcast whereby a certain guy who was invited in the postcard and said making one million is the hardest mm -hmm. task mm -hmm. but making the second million yeah. is the easiest exactly. job that you can ever have. I mean if you can make your first a thousand dollars then you can Man, make ten, that, then you can make your hundred because uh -huh. I think right now you have the blueprint or you have exactly. there exactly because I feel like it's what you learn through the process because mm -hmm. I mean think about it bro like 
if all of a sudden someone brought and dumped hundred k and they gave it to you, mm-hmm. okay, fine, you've gotten the money, but mm-hmm. you've not gone through the process. The process. Now that makes the difference. So I personally also feel like making your very first a thousand uh-huh. can be difficult, mm-hmm. but making your ten k, your next hundred k, none. Mm-hmm. Even I also feel like. Now let me give you an example with mm-hmm. why I'm and all that. Mm-hmm. I feel like if everything was all taken away, mm-hmm. but I'm left with what I have in mind, uh-huh. and what I've learned in the process, wouldn't take me too long. And to to I'm back to go. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That you have reminded me something like you can take everything that I have worked for, mm. but you cannot take what it's in my mind, and that's my experience. Thing. Yeah and what i learned enjoying the journey yeah yeah because yeah. people tend to uh not enjoy the journey mm. they want to make the first step and forget the journey and go to success that's the thing and that's the big that's a big issue whereby people want success instantly <laughs> without enjoying the journey yeah 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 because yeah. when you have a blueprint mm. or you can be able to retract your steps mm when you are enjoying the journey yeah. it won't take you long to go back and for sure if any if you have if you lost what you have mm. like within a day like this because yeah. it takes maybe a disease yeah. or maybe an accident yeah, and yeah. you lose everything that you have things, yeah. you have had for maybe 10 years mm. but when you have the knowledge and the blueprint on how you manage to become successful and the mistakes that you made, yeah. How is it not going to be successful going the to second build time? Up very, very easy stuff. I yeah. would say. I think honestly, like to be very honest, mm-hmm. what I have learned the most is what you go through. Because mm-hmm. honestly, it's it's a journey. Just like what you said, actually, you can't skip it. You can. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know if you've heard of stories of what we have had lottery winners. Someone wins like a million, million. or a million. Yeah. Bro, it doesn't even take too long. The excitement and the money. The excitement is of the money. You just, you didn't go through the pain. You didn't go through the, the you didn't enjoy the journey. Mm-hmm. So, the journey must be enjoyed, and mm-hmm. you must go through it. You must endure until you know mm-hmm. you get to that stage. And if everything is taken away again, yeah. you can easily build up again. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> guys, this that is a real uh, a little banter, you know, about success and how you can. Yeah, a lot of people want to have motivation, but mm-hmm. they don't want to have the discipline yeah. to keep that motivation in place. Uh-huh. You may read a thousand and one books for motivation, listen to more motivations, but if you are not ready to put in the work yeah. and be in an uncomfortable place to be comfortable in the coming years, mm-hmm. man. Honestly, nothing is going to nothing happen. Nothing is going to happen. Yeah. So, guys, we want to, I think. Um, he will share with me some of the milestones yeah. he has achieved over the years as a trainer. Yeah, yeah. So keep on listening and keep on subscribing, guys, and go to his channel and also make sure you oh, you get inspired. And learn. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He has a whole YouTube video that I, I I'm going to link to leave uh, the description or also maybe he can show it on the screen. Yeah whereby you can learn about forex trading and everything maybe maybe later in the day maybe something might strike me and decide you know what let me become a student and learn yeah, something yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> learn. yeah. Learn for everyone. yeah 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 okay and for that let me just quickly show you my workspace and where all this goes down mm-hmm. so guys let's go and see where i'm excited to see huh? Where the how the success is cooked flow. There you go. So there you this go. is a very small space, Ooh. but it's giving. It's really, really comfortable. Mm-hmm. This is where everything goes down. Maybe let me just quickly show you what it is so we do have mm-hmm. a camera off here. Mm-hmm. This is a side angle. Then we also have a main camera off Main here. camera here. This is the big boy's camera, FX30. That. This is my that's dream that's camera that's for <laughs> maybe my photography work or maybe videography oh, work later in the future. It's a good camera. Yeah. Then we have, um, well, I just honestly, um, we do have the YouTube plug, 100k subscribers, 
Yeah. I think that was early this year. Pretty interesting, honestly. You know, when you're starting and you're most especially the content space, I want to eat 100k. That's a big dream. Yeah. yeah. And then this is the Forex Bulls uh, logo. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I do have an academy oh. again, entirely with trading, mm-hmm. and it's the Forex Bulls. And there we go. Then a bit of books. I do read a bit of books. So I wanted you to forget that time. Uh-huh. I was like, damn. The <laughs> yeah. first thing that, guys, the first thing that I noticed when I came here, yeah. it wasn't about the cameras or anything. Wow. Because even me in my house, the first thing that attracts you when maybe you get into the door, like directly there is a bookshelf and wow. I have, wow. I'm, I'm like, man. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then, um, oh, so, yep. Oh, then I do have a bit of watches here. So I only have two though. So two nothing much, honestly. Mm-hmm. And a little bit of a carving somewhere. Oh, yeah. There. That's the pool over there. Mm-hmm. So I think nothing much big. I do take a lot of notes with my work. Yeah. Huh. So I always have a notebook on table. And then, um, you know, obviously that book over there. And and some lightings yeah, to lighting. make sure that the content that is coming in has good lighting we have a flat flat mm, flat light here yeah. there is a microphone yeah we also have another light down here mm-hmm. so it gives it that aesthetic look aesthetic look yeah. Yeah. so guys you might be having a small space but it depends on how you're going to utilize by that space. Way, yeah, yeah, because this is very small, by the way. When you look at it, it's so, so small. So small. But, but what comes out of it? You won't even know that it's this small. It would. Because I was, I was looking at, uh, at your content from the street. I was like, oh, yeah. damn, this looks big. But oh, yeah. in real life, mm. whew, very small. Very you small. have a similar space in Uganda. It's mm-hmm. slightly bigger, mm-hmm. but it's giving the same thing. The same. This is smaller, but the other is big, mm-hmm. which you can't even notice. So. Yeah. yeah. So this is all it takes to be successful, guys. Sacrifice. Sacrifice, exactly. sacrifice, sacrifice. See, by the way, let me show something. So with this space, mm-hmm. oh, I also appreciate it that it's private. and So I get enough here, mm-hmm. sit down, work. I take notes, I write down my goals, I know what I want to access to, I know, you know? So I would say honestly, I mean, everything is honestly possible and doesn't even matter where you are or where you start from. Cause at the end of the day, no, no one cares. Like no one it's cares. only up to you. Yeah. So when someone sees out you on social media or what, okay, they may not know the backstory, mm-hmm. but- uh, But it takes a lot, it yeah. takes a lot. So guys, this is, uh from trading and uh all those things yeah this is a small milestone because mm. having big boys like this yeah. <laughs> is not a joke this, this specifically just for content for content uh, youtube videos and all that yeah then um there's way much more <laughs> there is mo- way much more yeah. to come than that here Yeah, you have uh, gotten some into some milestones and yeah. achievements and mm-hmm. everything, and also being able to achieve the hundred k subscription oh, yeah. when you're here in Kenya. Those mm-hmm. are big achievements for someone who grew up in maybe a small village mm-hmm. and never thought that they will be where they are right now at the yeah. moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right here you're sitting in your office. Yeah. This is where everything is cooked from, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, it's a big, big, big achievement, mm-hmm. especially you not thinking it will ever come to mm-hmm. reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see you moving to Dubai, to other places, yeah. that's still another mm-hmm. achievement. But this is a way of exposing yourself to new things, mm-hmm. especially you being a trader. Yeah. And maybe you'll find uh, in those areas, that's where you're going to find people who have much in-depth understanding of trading. That's yeah putting yourself in a place whereby you need to learn more every now and then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so maybe apart from reaching your thousand subscriptions, silver yeah, button, yeah, yeah. moving to another place, yeah. what is one thing that 
has been an inspiration for you yeah. to achieving all these things. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I think let me just give you a backstory on uh-huh. how, you know. Well, um, I think I mentioned it earlier on in the video, mm-hmm. but I've grown up in Uganda, but then most importantly in an average family. Mm-hmm. I can't say we were that bad love, say like this or that, uh-huh. but we weren't again rich. Mm-hmm. So it was an average background uh, mm-hmm. family of like eight mm-hmm. and you know a typical african family Ooh-hoo. so uh-huh. honestly again first things first i think is to be grateful to god and you know because it's it's always very very difficult to break that chain mm-hmm. and become that person who's going to change everything you know mm-hmm. literally so growing up just like that honestly i got to a point i think when i was like 15 or 17 mm-hmm. um in some way you'd always like have that feel of like when shall we get better? You know, you're at school and the other kids are living where you're like, when are things going to get better? Mm-hmm. So as you grow, you just keep getting that mm-hmm. um, that driving force inside you. And that was it for me. Mm-hmm. So um, getting done with high school, we have, we call it ordinary level in Uganda. That's like 2017. Uh-huh. I started trying a bit of hassles, but none of that was working because I was even younger. Mm-hmm. Then now when I got done with high school, 2019, mm-hmm. now that was the point now to fully lock in. Mm-hmm. So started off with many, honestly, many internet houses. Like mm-hmm. I tried a lot. I can't even mention everything. Then most of those would work, but then you're not getting paid because you're in Uganda, there's no PayPal and all that. Mm-hmm. Then that's how I came across trading. And also coming across trading, I got inspired by other guys. Like there were young guys by then, South Africans, mm-hmm. making money. I'm like, oh, this is it. I think this is I'm finally going to break out of this whole mm-hmm. stuff uh-huh. and locked in. Now, I think COVID came in and when COVID came in, it was time to learn. Because now no schools, no nothing. No, no. So You're was, just indoors. Exactly. So yeah. I'm in house, learning, learning. Like, bro, that was a whole journey. But in some way, I'm so happy that it paid off. Mm -hmm. Then I started off my trading. I never had enough money, honestly. So sometimes I'd go to mom, ask for $10, $15 or some, you know, Mm -hmm. get in, make a bit of money. Uh But not that consistent. Then uh, 2020, some 2020 entirely, you know, COVID and learning and all that. Then 2021, schools opened up again. I was to go for university, went for university. Mm -hmm. But then that's when I left. You left. Yeah. Well, we had story, bad decision, hard decision. I used tuition to go on my trading journey. Uh-huh. And that's how I got here. Then, again, gra- uh, gratitude is the most biggest thing. Because when I also picture up who I'm from, mm-hmm. bro, like, by the way, at some point when I'm even talking to, say, people, some, like, I just try to put myself as the perfect example. Because if you can really picture out that typical African background, mm-hmm. and now in like 2022, I bought my mama car. Now, I did it as a thing to me. Okay, this is the easiest way to make my mom happy. Happy. Yeah, you know. And believe in what you're doing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I've also had very many private wins, honestly. Things that you may not say even on camera something. Yeah. Then yeah, also yeah. on my side, I bought cars, bro. Like, now i don't know but cars to me give me fun uganda i do have cars then got here or got that mercedes um i travel the world so i'm not saying this to brag no no i'm trying to like inspire exactly and also create the relationship because this at the end of the day just gives me that possibility of like everything is possible Mm -hmm. bro like trust me disregarding from where you're from where you've started from mm-hmm. anything is possible also um like in 2021 we started an academy to teach other other guys how to trade to trade yeah. from those now we have created big success stories both in uganda and kenya i do have some students here and they're living large Ooh. that even gives me much more excitement Ooh. so now at some point now it's even away from me mm-hmm. now it's more, impacting the world it's more like right now you, you have reached to whereby you wanted to be in life mm-hmm. right now is trying to change or give back to the community exactly yeah because yeah. uh for these materialistic things bro it's like a passive you mm-hmm. chase you chase you make the money okay now okay fine i don't okay at this point if i want to travel i can yeah if i want to buy this i can you but can. okay now what next now that's why i say okay this is enough for me 
now impact the world or the people that i work with so yeah. mm. so that's a, that's a, that, that that's what i say about it eh? yeah you get everything that you ever wanted mm. under this sun yeah what next now what next exactly what next? so now the next phase as a man specifically mm-hmm. is now to impact the world and that's the journey that i'm on mm-hmm. and for like the past two years I think we have trained like over 5000 people now mm-hmm. both um oh it's actually worldwide now but oh, we wow. have more students in Kenya, Uganda, South Africa, uh-huh. also other guys in Nigeria, the mm-hmm. US. Now we are training people how to You're training make, people how, how to make that money. On right? that note mm-hmm. uh okay um how much mm. do you charge mm. for someone to learn trading mm. Mm. up to when they are going to make their first maybe a thousand dollars or yeah. maybe their first 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 dollar for oh, yeah. trading yeah mm. so we have a program it's six months mm-hmm. six months entirely me and then other uh, other mentors inside mm-hmm. i only charge 147 it's not even 150. Mm-hmm. so we put that charge to add that sense of value, value. i notice people never value free stuff like if you give value to people for free mm-hmm. they will never value it to cut you short mm. you when give people value mm. maybe when it's so cheap it's not that premium mm-hmm. people tend to think maybe you are scamming mm-hmm. or maybe you're not unrealistic yeah has that affected or have you met such mm. mindset um i think we have mm-hmm. but also considering the people that you're dealing with mm-hmm. um i think that the, the demographic the young people so yeah. they don't have money yeah. then also um you know just looking at that and also again it comes back from heart because mm-hmm. we had an option of making it say like a thousand or five hundred uh-huh. and you only get in a few people a few people yeah, yeah but if you're really looking at helping many people and getting you know out there mm-hmm. then i think it's a much better road and most importantly all the interesting part is from our students mm-hmm. now we have the success stories the success stories. yeah so yeah. now what has worked for me has also worked for, for some person yeah. mean, meaning it, it actually works so mm-hmm. th- that's the most interesting part of it all wow yeah so um people who have passed through your academy Mm. and through your hands what are like the future 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 aspiration goals that you have yeah maybe here in kenya or Mm. maybe in kampala or maybe where you're going or or, yeah where (laughs) you know maybe you're opening a new chapter in your life yeah well so here's it so um I've always had this and I think it's a very bigger vision mm-hmm. and big visions take time. Yes. Yeah. But I feel like the education system in Africa specifically is lacking. So probably like a year or two years old, I may not estimate the time very well, mm-hmm. but we look at creating a very bigger platform mm-hmm. that is going to challenge the former education system. Because I feel like, look, bro, you go to school for six. 16 years 16 years of and your you life leave university and you're trying to find jobs yeah it doesn't work and like how things are changing now that you could learn a skill mm-hmm. there are very very many um high income skills that people don't even know about mm-hmm. but in any case if they knew about them mm-hmm. then maybe they could be making a living off that yeah. so that's the biggest vision now that we are looking out mm-hmm. for Probably maybe in like a year or two years we shall start yeah. up something like that. Yeah, yeah. Big. Actually, when you have mentioned about the schooling system in Kenya mm. or maybe in Africa, mm. most uh, f- parents yeah. they tend to push their kids and tell them, "Yeah, um, education is the key. Mm. Yeah, I know education yeah, is everything. Because yeah. if we didn't have this education." Mm. We, maybe we could not be having these polished maybe conversation or mm-hmm. maybe we could not be seeing things in a different angle sure. but for me where i am right now with everything that i know right now mm. i think the education planners they need to include skills learning in schools exactly yeah especially right now we have so many skills like people can be sitting down in an office like this yeah. and they're making a Thirty thousand US dollars yeah, per yeah. night, or mm. maybe per, by the end of the month. Yeah. But what are they doing? Forex, exactly. copywriting, mm. drop shipping. You know, and that's where it comes like mm. uh, the millennials.
and that's why uh, the millennials mm-hmm. and the boomers or the Gen Xs, they tend to be going haywire mm-hmm. with the Gen Xs. Why? Mm-hmm. Because they are saying that this generation are lazy. They are not lazy. They have found a way to make money in the simplest way. Exactly. You can be working so hard in the wrong direction. That's the thing. But you can be working smart yeah, yeah, yeah. in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Imagine now, I was comparing like going into a parking of, I'm not trying to, to mm-hmm. trust these people, mm-hmm. but go to a parking whereby you have lecturers and teachers mm-hmm. and count how many cars that you're going to see there that are very, very, very luxurious. Exactly. But you go to maybe this apartment and maybe the young people who are living yeah. there, you find very, very, very executive cars. And when you ask those people, they live... Maybe they are they come out of their house maybe once in a while. Funny thing, yeah. yeah. And they are making more than you're making. Exactly. That is a skill. Yeah. They have found a way to invest in themselves, mm. learn a skill, mm. and utilize that skill to make something out of themselves mm. when they are still indoors. Sure. If that can be incorporated in the education system, then we are good. Then we are good. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Yeah, because like for me, sometimes I sit down and look at younger people who are younger than me yeah 18 yeah 16 crazy many people are doing drop shipping they're living in large in dubai and miami beverly hills yeah. maybe mm-hmm. also like in affluent neighborhoods here in kenya mm-hmm. you're asking yourself i'm working so hard i have been corporate world for a very long time mm-hmm. i'm making this amount of money but a young guy 16 has come maybe a few years and they have already overtaken me and they are living a good mm-hmm. life you ask yourself where mm-hmm. did i go wrong where you go wrong is the education system exactly yeah i think what you actually mentioned early mm-hmm. well the education system is good because we are able to speak together in english and all that mm-hmm. but let's tell you we have those skills then it's really so hard because look bro we have many guys graduating yeah a few job opportunities. A few job so opportunities. What, what are we supposed to do? So I think that's a very, very big thing. Mm-hmm. Once it's fixed, then we are all good. We are all finally good yeah. to go. So since you have the academy mm. and you have so many aspirations to mm. change young people's mind. Yeah. No, not young people. Mm. The, the, the whole demographic. Exactly. If people will be open to learning things. Sure. What is the legacy mm. you would want to leave mm. as a young person? Yeah. Well, um, I think specifically is to say this guy came, mm-hmm. created history. Yes. But through history, mm-hmm. he was able to inspire millions mm-hmm. and in return uh, create millionaires. Mm-hmm. And I'm so, so happy that we're on the same track. By the way, let me give you a quick story. See, right now, when I go back to Uganda, yes. bro, I'm not going to step into a mall mm-hmm. and won't get spotted by like 10 young people. Even here in Kenya, young people now, most especially because they're the ones really getting on yes. track yeah. much faster. Internet is the young man's exactly game so now space. literally yeah. so now let's estimate say five years from now these uh-huh. guys will be a little grown yeah but now they're making money mm-hmm. and what did it or how did it start mm-hmm. well it started with this idea that we spread mm-hmm. so even by the way with now like what i'm also trying to do is create more awareness mm-hmm. show the possibility mm-hmm. because not until someone knows that it's possible yeah then they won't take action they won't take get action. awareness create the possibility and trust me we are going to have millionaires we're going to have by the way i even see that coming probably in like the next five we all see young guys driving you know exotic cars in here yeah and it has started manifesting because i'm seeing some young guys driving like yeah man there is this guy who always comes to my workspace Mm. he's a very young young guy Mm. he's driving a uh, Lamborghini Urus. Wow, crazy. So you see where we're headed? You know? So things are just taking a different A different turn. turn. Yeah. yeah. So we discussed more about achievement and mm. legacies and maybe we almost forget about your personal journey. Yeah. Yeah. So what motivated you to moving to leave everything behind? Yeah. And you chose mm. Kenya in specific. Mm. Was Kenya a dream for you or it just yeah, happened? happened. <laughs> yeah, that was a dream. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I think... Oh, actually, like how we discussed a little earlier in the mm-hmm. video, 
like uh, my love for Kenya, specifically Nairobi, mm. and growing up. And at some point, you just want to satisfy that childhood dream. dream. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So that was a thing too. <laughs> but then also, I have um, like I have a goal of having at least three places where I do stay. Mm-hmm most especially cities to do with entrepreneurs wow. so in africa i would say in africa currently we have cape town we have i would say nairobi yeah. by the way because we have very many people here from west africa from south africa and the city is developing yeah so we have cape town we have nairobi and then dubai so i was able to get a place in dubai so mm. let's go there now that it's a challenge you're yeah. meeting people that are completely ahead and you're getting challenged you, you you're get working hard yeah. yeah same thing with cape town too it's also good uh that it's in africa but yeah. purely developed mm-hmm. and then nairobi nairobi is on road it's really developing so i'd actually recommend for any upcoming entrepreneurs who you want to you know uh tap into that online entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship mm-hmm. the space, mm-hmm. then Nairobi is the best city, bro. Yeah, and mm. for me, I was looking on all these things about Nairobi mm. and how each and every country wants to, um, what do we call it, invest mm. or have their company. Like we have Google mm. offices here, we mm. have Microsoft. Crazy, by the way. Starlink is going crazy here yeah, in Nairobi. Yeah. You see, uh, like people here in Nairobi are more hungry for mm, success. Mm, and that's one thing that also keeps me afloat. Mm, like you'll meet someone who is maybe a mile ahead of you and mm, you'll be like, damn. That's a thing. I wanna be where this person is. Yeah. And that's why it gives us these successful stories and also enjoying the journey. Mm. Yeah. So and also I've seen so many expatriates mm, moving to Kenya. Mm, mm. I think it has been contributed by either content creators who are trying to push so hard about Nairobi. Oh, yeah. And also, like, when the Microsoft, they say they want to move their offices here, mm. the Google and also the UN, they want to also move their mm. half of their office in Nairobi. Yeah. And you ask yourself, what's, what is Nairobi? Mm. What, is, mm. what is that one thing that is making each and every person want to move to Nairobi? Yeah. Because you'll meet a whole... Uh, different people from a whole different background mm. from US, Canada, any other part of the world, you'll never meet someone from and I've had people who, who are not even black Americans mm-hmm. they are Europeans, they dished everyone, everything they had maybe in their country mm. just to move in Nairobi yeah. and you ask yourself I want to move from Nairobi, yeah. but someone else wants to take that space. <laughs> See, yeah. if someone else wants to take that space, I, and you'll be asking yourself, yeah. what's so special about Nairobi? Yeah. You know, you might be having, you know, I might not be seeing that, yeah. but you as a person who has come from another country, yeah. there's that special yeah. thing about By Nairobi. The way, I think that's a thing too. Yeah. That was a very deep question. Yeah. But, um, okay, I think to really be so honest with whatever is happening in the space. Mm-hmm. I think Nairobi as a city mm-hmm. and Kenya as a country, honestly. I think Kenya is the fourth biggest economy, if I'm not in, mistaken. I think in Africa or? In Africa. In Africa, yeah. I don't know, with a third or something. We want to so check it's developing. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's check. developing. And then in the due process of developing, most especially, again, things are going digital. Yeah. So we have Microsoft, we have Google, we have um, Oracle, I don't know. Okay, All most those, big, yeah, those, big companies are yeah. here. And then also, uh, oh, Starlink is also here. Yeah. So I think there's much more opportunities here. What's special? So honestly, that's a very tricky question. Mm-hmm. Because, um, so for the first time coming off here, let me see. So 2021. And, um, okay, to be honest, I think the first impression as compared to Uganda mm-hmm. was, the, uh, was the infrastructure, mm-hmm. the roads, then the, oh, the most skyscrapers here. Uh-huh. So I'm like, what? So this is Kenya mm, and yeah. just in Uganda. <laughs> so that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, the, uh, to cut you short, uh, you know, I've had so many Ugandans coming to Kenya and maybe I take them to Nairobi, yeah. Upper Hill and all those places. Be, they always be like, wow, wow, yeah. wow, wow. Yeah. And they tend to be turned into ambulances. Wow, wow, <laughs> wow, 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 yeah. wow. Yeah. So when I, by the way, when I tell people, when I say about Kenya is a dream country for mm. many Ugandans, people mm. tend to go haywire but no, not to lie but I, I would say i would say yeah yeah, yeah okay 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 that's that's a that's a, a whole uh, another, other discussion the, I think, well you're gonna should come and see nairobi yeah Kenya. 
oh, come oh, and see, come out of the, the land of uh, Uli Mulunji. <laughs> yeah. okay, the I land of. That. That's, uh, I speak a little bit Luganda, uh-huh. Kidogo Kidogo, <laughs> Salamu, and maybe. Yep, so um, I'd honestly say that's a dream for you guys. Now, I don't want to, you know. I know guys want to come, so please come and you'll be excited, just like I was. <laughs> oh, I would also say Kenyan should go to Uganda and yeah, see. I've been wanting to go you to know, Uganda one, for a very long time. For sure, you yeah. should. And uh, I, think, I think maybe, it, I think it's the, the actual time hasn't come, but oh. also you cannot go to a country without good. Oh, planning or something? I get, yeah, I get, I get. I guess. So, I think the biggest difference here is the weather. That's it's cold here and it's a bit uncomfortable. Uh-huh. As compared to Uganda, in Kampala, it won't get so cold like that and it won't get too warm. So it's in there. Mm-hmm. And like here, bro, I had a friend from uh, Switzerland. Mm-hmm. His lady was saying, Nairobi is cold. I'm like, you're from Europe and you're crying about coldness. So it's pretty cold out here. And so <laughs> you on that one, yeah. people have this stereotype of a cave uh-huh. whereby they think that coming from those countries, mm. cold countries, you're coming to a hot country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, you're right, you're right. Nairobi is cold, my friend. <laughs> it's Nairobi, very cold. There are times whereby you have to wear two jackets and trust me, it's crazy me, cold, it's cold. Yeah. So don't ever think that you're coming to Kenya or Africa without knowing mm. that the duty that you're going to a hot country will end up being so cold. Since moving from Kampala, now it's been a year and maybe it's a few months. Are there some challenges that you have faced? Mm, honestly, no. Mm-hmm. I don't think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I easily move on or adopt to new environments. Very quickly. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. honestly, hadn't had any big issues. Mm-hmm. Over to Mike, you know, now that she's speaking, I do want you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So also like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, what about, have you had challenges of maybe settling in, mm. especially when it comes maybe to housing or choosing a place to stay? Um, honestly, I think when I came in, mm-hmm. not a big issue because there is Airbnbs, there is, but also I think it, <coughs> it just depends on what you want. You want yeah. yeah, so for my stay here, I didn't want uh, to own a very big house, you know. Mm-hmm. So just went in for an apartment type of, and it's really good, pretty comfortable, mm-hmm. easy to manage as compared to owning a very big house. Mm-hmm. So it's much more easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So it wasn't it wasn't that hard for you to set in and uh, you know start doing your things here in Nairobi. It wasn't. Uh, yeah, honestly not. And. Um, think maybe you have maybe have noticed maybe differences in maybe especially when it comes to settling in mm. especially trying to choose the right place for you to stay mm. or maybe there is a difference in how housing is done here in Kenya and also maybe how it's done in Uganda or is there some difference because maybe right now you want to own houses here in Kenya mm. you don't want to rent anymore yeah. you want like to buy and have your own house mm. how is it like is there a, a major difference or mm. Mm, honestly again no big difference mm-hmm. um yeah i noticed with uh, owning an apartment here and then in uganda mm-hmm. it's actually the same oh. yeah even uh, for the payments if you wanted say to do a down payment mm-hmm. it's all the same so no big difference in there okay. uh the building style i think it's a bit modern here yeah. Because you know the fast pace and all that, mm. as compared to Kampala, yeah. yeah. Mm. Wow. Mm. So that means do do people pay uh, rent monthly in Kampala, mm. or do they pay like in Tanzania where they, you have to pay like a six months what? rent? You know Tanzania they do pay like six months, twice a year. Wow. You pay six months, then the next six months, that's how they do it. That was my experience when I was in Tanzania. If you want to own a house mm-hmm. or you want to rent a house, you cannot just rent a house for maybe for a long-term stay for a, for a month like the way you do here. 
we do like six months or twice a year. Okay, that's that's even that's new to me. <laughs> that's crazy. No, no, no. Also in Uganda, it's the same as here. Uh-huh. You can uh, say do three months in. You have your security and all that, yeah. and you have access to the place. Mm. Ah, that's crazy about Tanzania. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if they want to be more secure or anything. I guess mm. maybe they want to be more <laughs> secure. Anyway, guys. Eh? Okay. Uh, um, how have you found the community here in Kenya, like in your day to day work or life? Okay. Um, it's fun. Mm-hmm. It's fun. I get to live how I want. Uh-huh. I love going out. Mm-hmm. Uh, nightlife and all that yeah. so it's actually fun then also the people I speak Swahili so oh, a bit it don't go. <laughs> it for you to exactly yeah, yeah. yeah so it's honestly very very easy mm-hmm. and also it's actually like I mentioned there is literally no difference between the world of living here and in Uganda yeah yeah so someone from Uganda maybe that I've not been to Tanzania, I'm not sure, yeah. but there is no big difference in here. Mm. Um, making friends, uh, food, moving out, so wait, easy. Wait, 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 wait. wait. When, when it comes to, especially to food, mm. you know you guys are used to maybe more of organic, organic and plentiful, plentiful of food. Yeah. How is it here in Kenya, especially you moving and getting to maybe have whatever you want here. Yeah. Change. I think okay, that's a thing now. Now Uganda wins here. Yeah. Uganda, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think for, for for my time in Nairobi specifically, mm-hmm. I'd say the food in Uganda is much better because it's organic. Uh, like it's fresh. Yeah, unlike here yeah, sometimes I go over to a supermarket and say something has been there for some, mm-hmm. you know, exactly. Unlike in Uganda, I was staying in Kampala, but you have fresh food i don't know why that i don't know why it's that way i don't get it because i also feel like even in kenya especially up country western and all that there's still fresh food and all that so i don't know why there's that that was the like the same thing in dubai when you're in dubai bro like it's so hard to find fresh Fresh organic organic food now that side it's even worse (laughs) yeah now i think maybe that's why it comes and say maybe uganda has food security maybe in some way because <laughs> yeah i've had imagine most of the times i do maybe take my time and go to explore those i have gone to uganda for mm. i loved uganda especially mm. like like togo mm. and uh what do you call it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah that's ah, ugandan food that's yeah. ugandan food <laughs> yeah. i love it i love it it's very very fresh and it's cooked in I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean. It's very nice. Yeah. So, um, coming to the end of this maybe interview, mm-hmm. uh, huh, um, hmm, what advice would you give to people who want to first immigrate mm. from their country mm. to another country for greener pastures? Mm. Okay. Um. Oh, by the way, I think. Why let me mention? I think that I love to mention. Um, I think it's a very good decision. Just like again, how we mentioned earlier on, mm-hmm. but also, um, I think people always have that fear of like, how am I going to adopt or how am I going to do this or that? Mm-hmm. But like, not until you try, then you won't. So most especially for like East Africa. Oh, by the way, I notice, like, there's that trend. Like I have uh, Kenyan friends in Uganda. Mm-hmm. I've also had uh, I met Rwandan friends here. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it should be much more easier. Mm-hmm. Also, by the way, with the East African community, yeah. it's even much more easier. Mm-hmm. And if say someone wants to move in, it's just a decision. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a decision. When you decide, then you can easily do that documentation, which is also easy, honestly, mm-hmm. for the East African specifically. Mm-hmm. And I mean, <laughs> again, just not until you try, then you won't know how Isn't good. It? Exactly. Isn't yes. It? So, and uh, what advice would you want to give to people or young guys or whoever wants to be in training? Mm. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, ha, to just learn. Just learn. learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get down, learn. Um, 
good things also come through learning. Mm -hmm. Or even with the discussion that we had, we said you must go through the journey, you must enjoy the process, mm -hmm. and that's how results come through. Oh, also avoid the quick get rich thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like nothing as you're going to make a quick bag in a week or something. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. It's also it. It's a whole journey that must be endured, that must, you know, you learn through the process and, you know, make the money. Mm. Mm. So it's been a very, very interactive discussion. I also have learned some few things, one, two, and three. So if I ask you, if I want to join trading, what are the things that I want, to, I need to have? Okay, so for someone to start trading, you need your phone. Which everyone has, whoever is watching this video, or a laptop, but a phone also does better. Mm -hmm. Then um, a bit of capital. Now that depends. Mm -hmm. The money that you're trading off with is going to determine how much you're making. Mm -hmm. If someone is trading with ten dollars, they'll make less, maybe like two dollars or a dollar or something. Mm -hmm. But if someone is trading off with a thousand, then they'll make more, or ten thousand or something. Mm -hmm. So when you have your phone. Learning is also easy. You could learn from YouTube. I personally do a lot of educational videos on how to trade or get a mentor. As I mentioned, we have an academy and we have over a thousand people in there. We have Kenyans in there. We have Ugandans. We have Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Le I think we have everyone in everyone there. In yeah. The platform. Yeah. And then in there, it's myself and then other mentors, guys that have proved to be successful. Mm -hmm teaching you how to trade, mm -hmm. which is much more easier. Mm -hmm. So for someone who would say love to uh, join an academy, yeah. just go over to forexbullsacademy.com. Pretty easy to get access to. And um, I'll be excited taking you on that beautiful journey. Mm -hmm. Sure. We, before we end, do mm -hmm. you mind maybe showing us a little bit of how you do your trading? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let me just quickly show you over here. So I'll just turn my screen maybe... Okay, so this is it. Oh, I was actually even trading right now. Mm -hmm. So just like how we can see right now. You know, for me, mm -hmm. I cannot be able, I, I have not even <laughs> ever had. No idea, no nothing about this. Ah. So you have to, I, be, I can be able to see bars. Yeah, bars. yeah, yeah, I would call okay. them bars. So, it looks like so, <laughs> so this is it. I believe you have seen those charts in the newspapers and all that, that the dollar has gained strength and all that, right? Yes. So this is the concept here. So in here, mm -hmm. we buy when the price is going up mm -hmm. and then sell when the price is going down. Okay. Let me just quickly give you an example. So if, say, mm -hmm. like actually recently, the Kenyan shilling has been gaining value, right? Over the dollar. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so in such an instance, I would buy the Kenyan shilling mm -hmm. and sell the dollar. Okay. So I profit when the price is going up. Mm -hmm. Meaning, much a much easier example is say you buy land at say a hundred k, and then you know in like two months it's going to be say a million or whatever. So you gain. So it's the same idea here. So just like in this example, I just placed a buy off here. So I placed a buy somewhere here, and this is going to be my profit as the price goes up. I'm making profit. Then this side down here is what I'm risking. Yeah, so I know I'm risking, say, $100 mm -hmm. to make 500 or I'm risking $20 to make th uh, 50 I don't know, something like that. Mm -hmm. So basically, this is the concept. Oh, mm. And I think I've heard people having the conversations of mm. trading and stuff. I have heard there is day trading and mm. also there is night trading yeah. or day trading. What, what's the di what are those different? Well, um, so there is day trading. Mm -hmm. This is what we are doing. Day trading, you're trading during the day. Mm -hmm. And specifically, say for hours, one or two hours or something, and then you're done. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. I trade for like an hour or two, and then I'm done. Mm -hmm. Then we also have what we call swing trading. Swing trading is where you hold trades for a very long time. Uh -huh. So you can open up a trade now mm -hmm. and let it run for like a month. Wow. So it means you're just letting it after a month, you'll come and close off your profits. So how does that work? Well, that works in a sense of like, you know, there are always moves or changes. Mm -hmm. Now, let me give you an example. Um, say someone bought the Kenyan shilling mm -hmm. at, I think it started appreciating um, in March or Feb, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But say someone bought it before it started the move. Mm -hmm. Even if someone had held it for like two months because it's still appreciating. Mm -hmm then they would have still made more money. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Then we also have what we call scalping. Mm -hmm. Scalping is just short term. Mm -hmm. Someone is trading off for uh, mm -hmm. minutes or seconds, uh -huh. and then they close off their they profits. Off yeah, so basically those are the three. I don't have an idea of trading. Should have some time. I teach maybe you how I to trade. Maybe and I should get some time. Uh, for sure. Some time because, yeah. Yeah. And then get to understand these things. Mm. You know, sometimes you look for things to do maybe when maybe you're traveling. and Yeah. Yeah. Have, what, is, what was your biggest profit ever since you started trading? Oh, I think in like, um, I think like 2022, mm -hmm. August. In one trade, I made up to seven thousand. Yeah, so that's the biggest, that's uh -huh. the craziest amount I've made in a single trade. But before you get that, that to that point, mm. you have lost. You yeah. Have made losses. Yeah, I've also made losses, mm -hmm. and I still make losses by there. So with a trading business, mm -hmm. you risk, and you know how much you're making. Uh -huh. So it's just like any other business where you know I am opening up a business. Mm -hmm. I'm putting all this, mm -hmm. and that's on risk, right? Yeah. But I want to make this in return. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with trading. So if I made a profit of 7,000, yeah. I was risking about 500 or 700. That is in US dollars. Exactly. Yeah. So pretty much better. But for that, I'm able to do that because I'm trading off with bigger capital. Mm -hmm. But I've also traded off with small accounts. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I have pictures of here, but I'd have shown you. Okay. But I've also traded off with small accounts of like a hundred dollars and I'm able to make five hundred, which is also very possible. So it's much more of the skill set and that's why I mentioned early. Mm -hmm. Someone just has to learn. Like you just need to learn, get good at it, and you know, and the bug comes in. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So everything has a risk. So you risk to get a bigger a bigger money to come in. Exactly. So if someone, maybe someone might ask, mm -hmm. how much mm -hmm. do you even need to start trading? Um, I think that's a very... Like maybe the, like the minimum, the mm -hmm. minimum amount of money you need to have maybe in an account, mm -hmm. or maybe, do they call them, ac yeah, in those accounts, mm -hmm. minimum mm -hmm. to start a trading? Um, that's a very, very tricky question because like the figure is not that fixed. Mm -hmm. Someone else can start off with a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Someone else can start off with a thousand. Oh, so there is no fixed. Yeah, yeah. Supposed to be in the account. Exactly. Okay. But I think the biggest advice that I've gotten or would share with someone is when you're starting off, you can always start small because mm -hmm. you're new to something. Mm -hmm. Your targets are smaller and you're making less. Mm -hmm. But then as you get better, mm -hmm. because now say you're doing trading full time, mm -hmm. now you need to make big money from it. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you can decide to go big. Mm -hmm. So just like for my case, I do trading full time. So I entirely depend on it okay. as compared to the other side houses. So that's the thing. So you may say that trading is a quantifiable job. You can just depend fully and do amazing things with just trading. Exactly. A hundred percent. It's a real job. Right now it's a job. <laughs> because let me give you a, like a snippet of my daily life. Mm -hmm. I wake up, first things first, come off to the charts, uh -huh. these charts here. I need to draw out my whatever and then wait. Wait for the, the price to do whatever it does, then I'll be able to make the money. So now to me, you see, like my entire day rotates around this. About yeah, Collins. exactly. Uh -huh. So has there been uh, fluctuations in the market value of indices or whatever, mm. whatever? Mm. In, okay, these are just words coming out yeah. of my mind, but I don't know if they relate to <laughs> yeah, Collins. Yeah, they do. Uh -huh. They do. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So um, what, was, what was I asking? Uh, has there any fluctuations? Yeah in the market value that has affected your day trading? Mm. Yeah. Well, those happen every day. Those happen every day. Yeah, so our target is always, how do I profit from this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when the price is going up, I need to buy. And when it's going down, I have to sell. To close the... Actually, actually, it's closing your previous buys, and now you decide to sell. Oh, I have idea. Exactly, because yeah. okay. you're buying high, and okay. then uh, okay. rather buying low and then selling high. So this high. one is not going to take me long before. 
literally yeah things like images are coming yeah i don't know how you got that (laughs) so basically that's that's the whole idea so trading um for the theoretical part of it honestly it's so so easy not to lie Mm -hmm. the theoretical part Mm -hmm. it's easy because you get to learn from videos or say you're under mentor Mm -hmm. and then now you get to a practical part of it and that's the money side of it Mm. so guys you have heard all that comes with Mm. trading and the success that comes with trading Mm. so Okay, so be sure you subscribe, smash that subscribe button, Mm -hmm. and also turn on the notification bell. I know good content coming up. We just discussed his cooking. Yeah, yeah. So, Uh, what is your last regards to everyone, mm -hmm. and uh, what would you want for my community to know that is it? Okay, um, that from me. Mm -hmm, Wow, um, I have a phrase. Uh Once you're in, there is no looking back. And that means for whatever you're working on, the moment you get into it, mm-hmm. then there's no looking back, not until you find the success. I feel like most people get into something and quickly get out. Mm-hmm. They don't even wait longer. There is also this phrase that Jim Goa say, mm-hmm. when you start, there's no looking back. Wow, that's very <laughs> close. Yeah. I just heard that from you now. No. What? That's crazy. That's a phrase that I personally am a person who works out a lot. And the moment you just get into many gyms, mm-hmm. you'll maybe see that place. Mm-hmm. No pain, no gain. Mm-hmm. When you start, no going back. I exactly. think maybe you have heard it from maybe some videos watching my yeah. So it's been nice meeting you, uh, Daniel. Nice to having this conversation and maybe many more coming. Maybe you might even decide to work together maybe later For in sure. the future. Because, yeah, we get to connect and get to understand things from different angles. So it's nice having you today and uh yeah we see you on the next episodes cheers thank you